All right, so it's time to set up the things necessary to build our application. We're gonna work backwards, go from the database to the mid-tier, and then um, set up our core, okay? So we're gonna start with the database. Uh, for this project, I'm gonna be using a hosted Cassandra instance uh, by Datastax, okay? I mentioned this in the very first video. I highly recommend uh, setting up your free account. Uh, you can do a whole lot with a free account. It's fairly generous. And if you follow along this course, you're guaranteed to not hit the free limit. So you basically get this whole thing for free, all right? So I highly recommend checking out uh, the Datastax website. Uh, you go to uh, datastax.com and then uh, click on try for free and uh, set up your account. I already have an account. So what I'm gonna do is just sign in. All right, I click sign in and now I am in the dashboard, which is the main page where you can create databases. I have one database over here called Astra Test. You wouldn't probably have that if you're signing up for the first time. What you need to do is create a new database instance. A Cassandra database, like I mentioned, is a distributed database. So when you're setting up a database, you're essentially setting up multiple nodes, okay? So it kind of spins up automatically. And uh, you have an option of choosing where you want the database hosted, right? You can host it on Google Cloud, uh, Azure, and uh, AWS, okay? So I'm gonna start this whole process by clicking on this Create Database button, okay? So this Create Database button helps me create a new database. So there are a bunch of basic details you have to enter. Uh, first is what's the database name. I'm going to choose the database name as Better Reads, okay? And uh, the next thing is the key space name. A key space is kind of, kind of like the schema, okay? So here, a key space stores your group of tables like a schema in a relational database. This helps keep rela related tables of information in a single place but then your database. So for example, let's say you have uh, this application, the Better Reads application, you wanna group all the, you know, the transactional tables in one place. Let's say you have a bunch of admin tables which you wanna keep separately, you can possibly keep it in a separate key space, right? You're grouping tables together, very much like schema. Uh, I'm just gonna create the main schema. I'm gonna call this main. So it's gonna be all of my application. Uh, tables in that schema. Now, the next step is to select a provider in a region. Again, the database that you create with Astra is gonna be hosted on one of the cloud provider options that we have over here, right? So you have Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure. Uh, I'm gonna choose uh, Google Cloud here. Uh, you know, as it says here, the, the providers and regions can have different costs. And I think Google Cloud is the, the cheapest off the lot. So let's say I go for North America and uh, let's say I go for Oregon. Okay, so free tier gets up to $25 per month uh, and then pay as you go, but it's like, in order to be, um, in order to reach $25, it's it's gonna take quite a bit, right? Uh, and uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing the file that you're gonna be using for following along. So it's not gonna be the whole load of books, right? I don't want you to get all of the books from the Open Library API and upload them all together, right? So that's, there's a chance that you can go over the free limit. So don't do that. Uh, use the the download in the you know in the video link. So whenever I get to that step, I'm gonna share with you the download link for what data you need to download and follow along. So as long as you follow along with that data, you are gonna be no way near hitting the free tier limit, right? So you can basically follow along this whole thing for free. So I'm gonna choose this uh, and uh, this is the region. So what I'm gonna do is with, with this selected, I'm basically telling uh, Astra, I'm basically telling the data strikes Astra you know, infrastructure to create Cassandra instances on Google Cloud North America region on this, this particular one, all right? The Dales, the Dales, Oregon, okay? So this particular region. Uh, you can choose another region if you like. It's probably going to have a different uh, implication in terms of how much it's going to cost. But again, it should very well be without below the free uh, limit, so you don't have to pay for this. Uh, and you don't need a credit card for this as well. So yeah, it's fine. Um, so with this, when I click the Create Database button, uh, this application is going to create a Cassandra instance with the database name Better Reads and with the key space name Main on Google Cloud at this region, right? So I'm gonna click on this Create Database button and um, 
it's gonna take a while. So you see here, it's created this uh, table and uh, the status says pending, which means that it's actually creating it. It's gonna take a little bit of time to actually uh, set, the, set up the infrastructure on that cloud and then um, have it ready. So give it some time. I'm gonna pause this video and then we will, uh, we will resume from when this is up. Okay, so as you can see, the database is up, right? So you see Better Reads is the database that we've just created and uh, it says status is active, all right? So I can open this database by clicking on the name of the database, right? Click on Better Reads and now I have the database open. Here's the overview, right? Zero read requests, zero write requests, all right? And zero storage consumed, no data transfer as well. And so zero cost. Uh, I can watch the health of this database by clicking on this health button, you get a bunch of charts which are not really meaningful right now. They will be meaningful once we start sending data to this thing. Uh, click on the SQL console button, okay? So you're gonna get a console on the web where you can actually run queries. So um, Cassandra doesn't do SQL, okay? It's a NoSQL database, so you don't run SQL queries on Cassandra, any Cassandra instance. Cassandra uses another query language called CQL, okay? It's the Cassandra query language. Uh, it's not SQL, it is CQL, uh, which can kind of technically be called SQL as well. It's a little confusing, but you get the idea. Cassandra query language for working with Cassandra, not SQL because this is a NoSQL database, all right? So what you can do here is, let me actually zoom this up a bit. So what I can do here is run CQL queries, okay? Cassandra query language queries. So the CQL queries are very similar to SQL. A lot of them are fairly similar and you might almost forget that you're working with SQL sometimes, but it tended to happen to me when I was first writing, you know, CQL queries. Well, it was like I was almost writing SQL queries and then there are these few things where it kind of stops you and some things that you know work in SQL don't work anymore. And then I realized, okay, no, I'm not working on SQL, I'm working on CQL. All right, so um, how do you work with this database? You've cre just created this database, right? And you've created one key space called main. How do you work with this? So there is this uh, command called describe, which allows you to describe things in the database, like tables or key spaces, all right? So I can do describe and then key spaces and then a semicolon. And then it's gonna show all the key spaces that are available in this Cassandra instance, database instance, all right? So you see there are a bunch of key spaces over here. The one that we've created is main, okay? That's what is over here. I can do describe main semicolon and it's gonna tell me what the key space is, all right? So here it has created a key space called main with replication factor of three, okay? What does replication mean? I told you how Cassandra is a distributed database and it has multiple nodes. You can technically have uh, every data in every partition go to just one node, in which case it is not very reliable. A common practice is to have it go to multiple nodes, okay? When you do a write, it doesn't write to just one node, it writes to multiple nodes. So if one node were to go down, the data is still available to be fetched, okay? The industry best practice for Cassandra is to have a replication factor of three, which means any write goes to three different nodes. Any data in a partition goes to three different nodes, which means that when you do a write, the write happens in one node first, and Cassandra propagates that to two other nodes, okay? So in this case, if one were to go down, there are two more. If the second one were to go down, it is still available, okay? So it makes it super duper reliable, okay? So that's a common industry best practice, and that seems to be the default that Datastax Astra has taken, which seems fine with me. I'm not gonna go into the network topology strategy and durable rights for now, it's beyond the scope of what we are covering here, but basically what you have is a key space called main, which has a replication strategy, which allows any write to go to two other nodes. 
You don't have to worry about it going to these nodes though. Cassandra is managing it internally. What you need to do is just say, hey, I have this table I'm writing to this table. Cassandra is gonna figure out what partition it belongs to based on the partition key, and then it's gonna take care of where it needs to go. So in a sense, it's kind of like relational database in terms of writing it, you just write and forget. Cassandra manages everything behind the scenes, right? So this is the key space main that we have described. Now I can go to this key space, use the key space by typing the use command. You can type use and then the key space name, semicolon, and now I am in the key space called main. You see this? CQL is such. This is the SQL shell, CQL shell, not SQL. And uh, the key space is main. Now I can see what are the tables that are available here. I can say describe tables. There are no tables, obviously, right? Because we just created that uh, key space. There's nothing there. We can create tables here by using the CQL command called create table, but I'm gonna do something better. I'm not gonna create tables using CQL. What I'm gonna do is create a Spring Boot application, okay? And I'm gonna use Spring Data Cassandra to create entity objects and have that create tables, okay? So I'm not gonna write uh, CQL syntax to create the table. I'm going to create entity classes and then ask this uh, Spring Data project, the Spring Data implementation to go create those tables for me. So it's kind of like ORM, right? But it's not object relation mapping in this case. If you're familiar with uh, Hibernate or stuff like that, this is very similar to that. In Hibernate, you create the at entity annotation, create the entity and then say, okay, go, uh, you know, define the schema for it, right? So you don't use the data definition language. Uh, using SQL, you actually do it the other way, using Java, right? So I'm gonna do something similar. So in the next video, I'm going to create a Spring Boot project and uh, we will add all these dependencies to, to work with this. Now, wh what is it that we need to do? Let's plan this out. We have data that we have downloaded from um, the Open Library API and the snippet of that which you would have downloaded, I'm gonna put this in the link in the description as well, so go download it if you don't have it. This data contains a bunch of books and authors, okay? What we need to do is set up that data in this instance, in this Cassandra instance that we've just created, okay? In the, you know, key space main, right? We know what the tables are, we've created that already. We know we have a books by ID, we have uh, books by author, we have a couple of tables which are, uh, book metadata that we need. So we need to take that data download that we have from the Open Library API and add that to this database, right? Create those tables and populate it with that data. So I'm gonna be looking at that file and populating it over here, which we're gonna do in the next video. So I'll see you then.